Hi there. Today I'd like to talk about VPN. Now here at F5 Networks we've been getting quite a few questions regarding VPN solutions and rightfully so. With the pandemic and the COVID-19 crisis impacting the world globally, organizations are scrambling to find ways to either expand or implement a remote access solution. So let's head on over to the demo area and discuss this a little further. So some of the questions regarding VPN that we're getting have to do with existing customers. And the top question we're getting is, how many CCUs do I have and do I have enough to support my current remote workers? Well, CCU stand for concurrent user license and it's how big IP and the F5 determine how many users are allowed to access your appliance or VE via the VPN. Now, every appliance or VE license comes with a base number of CCUs if you have APM or Access Policy Manager licensed. In addition, depending on your license will determine, determine how many CCUs you have. So there's a couple factors there that you have to weigh. Now, if you're asking about CCUs, chances are you already have APM provisioned and you're wondering, how can I find that? And we're gonna go through this in just a minute via the command line, and we're gonna show you also in the GUI where you can find out where those CCUs are located. The other question we're beginning is around two-factor. And obviously the advantage is a two-factor. You should be implementing a two-factor solution. There's no reason why you shouldn't. And the big IP and access policy manager make it very, very easy to implement a third-party two-factor. And we're gonna cover duo security. And the reason why we're gonna cover that is because F5 uses duo security internally as a two-factor mechanism. The other questions we're getting is around best practices and optimization and avoiding CPU spike. So this really is around current customers and the recent spike in, in VPN users has put load on their appliances or VEs. So there may be, an, there's probably a reason for that. They probably already had load on those devices or VEs. Maybe they were running a very uh, high CPU intensive module like ASM or Application Security Manager, which is our, our WAF or Web Application Firewall. And because they've ramped up VPN users, it has certainly put load on the box. And that's because VPN uses TLS SSL. And as we all know, that particular process is a very expensive process. So we're gonna show you how to optimize your current configuration to help with maybe some of that load. And then we're gonna run through a simple, very, very simple configuration of VPN using a full tunnel. We're gonna show you just how easy and fast it is to get one spun up in your environment. And then finally, we're gonna show you where the client and the software is on the big IP so you can get that off and onto your client so they can connect to your new VPN solution. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got quite a few articles here or web links and there's not, okay, there's maybe five, there's not a ton. Don't worry about memorizing these. I'm gonna put these in the comments of the YouTube video here so you can reference them later. But we're gonna cover these real quick and these align with what we just saw on that slide. So the first one is K article 15032, determining license limits on the APM. And this is where you're gonna to go to get instructions on how to find out how many CCUs you have. And something I wanna point out real quick is that we have this applies to button here. Let me scroll, let me zoom in a little bit. It's very important that you check this out when you're on our K articles. And let me back up just a bit. Our K articles are our knowledge base articles. And you're gonna find this at askf5.com or support.f5.com. So you'll see this link Ask F5, right? This is where F5 archives all of their solution articles. We used to call these SOLs or SOL, it was the prefix. We've recently changed it to K for knowledge base. But anyways, make sure that you are on the right solution article for your version of TMOS. Now, in this particular example, this shows that it applies to everything from 11X to 15X. Now, if you're on something earlier than 11X, you probably have other problems, but that's neither here nor there. 
In other cases, you may run across another article, which we'll show in just a minute, that it only applies to version 14x through 15. So make sure that you're on the right article for your version of software. Software changes all the time. F5 may change a knob or do something different. You want to make sure that you're on the right solution article for your platform. So enough of that. Let's continue scrolling down and take a look at this article, right? And I want to highlight or show here the show APM license command right here, TMSH show APM license. And this is what's going to show you via the command line how many access sessions you are licensed for. And as far as CCUs go, total connectivity sessions are right here, which says 500. Now let's pull up a big IP, which we're going to be configuring here in just a moment. And let's see how that lines up. So my particular big IP has the same number of licensed sessions. So I have 2,500 on this big IP, and I have 500 total connectivity sessions right here. And that shows you via the command line if you wanted to. And you can also see what current activity sessions we have. We have zero at this, at this moment in time. Now in the GUI, like I said, I mentioned that we could see this in the GUI. If you come down to system and license, you can also see in your license up here the 500 CCU and the 2500 access sessions that are licensed. Now it's not going to show you what's currently being used. You'll have to get that via the command line or do some logging in your APM policy to get real-time activity on your licenses.